Over the last 48 hours, there's been some significant change to modern warfare and Warzone that you may not have even noticed. It wasn't something that you may have been alerted of. There was no required download for the game that you had to install before you could play it again. It was simply just things that came along with regular playlist updates that at the most would restart your game here at this. And if you weren't online when those rolled around, you would just start up your game normally. They'd already be installed. But outside of a few small passing mentions over on Twitter, there's really not been a whole lot to let you know the player what's been changing. There's been a handful of those things that I definitely think are worth knowing. So today I want to break down everything that changed in the last few days with a series of mini updates for Modern Warfare and Warzone. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below what change maybe you're happy with or maybe upset with or anything you hope to see adjusted in the future. Let me know down below and as well, if you are part of that nearly 82% of viewers who may not be subscribed, be sure to do so to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare and Warzone content on a daily basis. But all that said, let's jump into the content at hand. Firstly, let's talk about some new content that's actually playable, some stuff that you can actually take advantage of here with this. The first one being the new mention of the new solo mode for Warzone Battle Royale, this being the new BR Stimulus Solos. This replaced the standard solos that you have on offer and is a subtle twist on the experience you may know if you are a solo player. With this, you end up starting with cash whenever you initially drop in. You'll start with 4,500, but there's some importance to that cash because that, if you don't know your buy amounts, is the amount that it costs to buy back a player if they've already gone through the gulag and either died or maybe died multiple times in a game. That's how much it costs to bring a player back. And there is no gulag here within this variation. So the catch with this new stimulus game mode is the fact that if you have $4,500 or above, you will automatically redeploy. It won't place you right over where you died, but you'll redeploy if you die and you'll be back into that fight. So starting out with $4,500 in cash, even if you die right away, you're guaranteed to come back at least once. So technically you do have that second chance guaranteed as opposed to where the gulag is a 50-50 pending the outcome of your 1v1. So the thing that's interesting about this is that again, you don't want to dip below that $4,500 mark. You will gain cash, you'll be able to buy things at your own pleasing, but you want to make sure that you at least have $4,500 in the bank. And there will be a yellow icon on that cash amount highlighting that if you are above it, you're good to go. It kind of signals that you have that buyback in pocket, but if you dip below it, which you can use that cash initially for something else if you want to, if you want to buy a self-revive or something like that, but it will then dip below, you won't be highlighted in yellow, and then if you die then, you're done for good. This makes for some crazy engagements that bumps up the player count towards the end of the match a big amount. This whole buyback process and what you can naturally come back with lasts all the way up until the second to last zone. So 20 minutes of in-game time is the timer that you have here for this and that's a lot of engagements that you may be bringing players back with. One thing that's nice is that you don't really have to worry too much about that threshold for the $4,500 because being that it is a stimulus solos variant, you do get more cash drops out of each chest you open up and you'll often find large stacks and even backpacks worth of cash. So you're getting 1,000, 2,000, upwards of three and four maybe even in one single drop. So you're good to go with that part. You'll be able to buy stuff with relative ease. Another nice part about this is that even if you do have that $4,500, 500 in cash, you're not necessarily out of the fight once you drop back in because you'll end up spawning with around 50% of the cash that you had on your person at the time of you dying. So you'll be able to kick yourself out again with some relative ease. Perhaps if you end up having a ton of cash, if you take some engagements, you'll collect others. I know that whenever I died the first time, I came back with over 10,000 in cash. So I was able to buy a loadout drop immediately. The one thing that I would definitely heavily recommend is that if you do have enough for a buyback and you're coming into late game, make sure you go into each game with a fully loaded class setup so that you can drop back in with your ammo and get right back into the engagements and not have to worry about using your ammo sparingly. That's a huge help, but the next thing that was added in as of today was a new variant for multiplayer called COD Players Want Only One Thing with the subtext and description of, and it's disgusting, that being shipment is now 10v10. It's still the 24-7 playlist, but it is insane. It's something that is pure chaos, but dare I say, I actually enjoyed this a lot. It was definitely your shipment experience, but elevated to a whole nother level. With this, honestly, I think you're going to be able to get 100 plus as easy because there's just so many engagements. If you get domination, it lasts so long and it's something you can rank up your weapons incredibly well, incredibly easy with, and takes that entire shipment experience just again to that next level. The weird part to me is that for my games that I played here on it, it actually kind of had some flow to it where I feel normally shipment doesn't actually have that. Spawns are still 
awful, but that's to be expected with 20 players on shipment. But there are a few times where very easily you could predict the walls of players, if you will, where it's kind of a back and forth tug of war around B flag, but neither side would cross their respective sides. So it was something that was interesting. It was a very fun experience here with it, but I also think it's fair to mention that that triple double XP event that was going on with double weapon XP, double XP for your season and career ranks, and of course your double tier progression, that's now since finished. So you can't really take advantage of that as much in the pure and utter chaos of shipment 10v10, but it is something that if you still have those XP tokens available to yourself to earn individually, you can still use those and it's a great opportunity to. I know that I'm still ranking up a few weapons, so I'll probably jump in with a few of my XP tokens and grind that out. But the final thing added in here today in terms of the playable content side of things was Gunfight 3v3 Knives Only, which was mentioned in Monday's blog post of the week at a glance, but we didn't see it this past Tuesday update, so it's now finally there available. But another thing that was mentioned in Monday's week at a glance blog post and is still curiously missing is that of the anime express bundle that was also mentioned to come out and it didn't on tuesday we kind of thought maybe it would come today because we see weekend refreshes as of recently but we didn't see that actually add in so i wouldn't stress it too much i would imagine this comes in the next 24 hours here with that but that said interestingly enough though we did actually see some players actually get this already there was a slight back door for a short period of time that you could view the vehicle customization and then view the actual bundle bundle that it was a part of and then from there in a sort of unlisted storefront landing page be able to buy that bundle early so in that short window where that was available you may have actually gotten an item that of course is not actually public yet and you may be a part of a very rare select few players that actually have this i'd be willing to guess that it's probably under a few hundred that have it in the entire world but that was available for a short period of time and i'd expect to go live for all players here very shortly other content changes that we saw were made most notably in the way of weaponry the biggest being the snake shot nerf, which was phenomenal. We've mentioned it here so many times on the channel, but this thing was the overwhelming meta for close quarters gunfights and engagements, and even sometimes medium range engagements. It was just simply put wild. I'm sure that you knew the problems that these presented, offering up the ability to shoot buckshot rounds, essentially bringing the shotgun aspect into the magnum. But when you took the natural two to three shot of the basic single fire snake shot 357, you of course doubled that with a Kimbo, and that's where the problem began because you could no exaggeration wipe squads without having to reload once, downing or even sometimes finishing off players with a single double pop of the snake shot magnums. Now these have since been rebalanced and hilariously it's been mentioned that there was a bug that allowed the damage to be too high at a distance. And I think that's kind of just a PR statement because these things haven't been adjusted since Warzone's launch. And if I'm not mistaken, the damage properties and the ranges even predated that of Warzone's launch. So this was around an MP also. But all credit to my good friend Exclusive Ace. If you, of course, have not checked out his channel, you're missing out on the statistical breakdowns and the scientific side of Call of Duty. But he ended up doing the math here with the base default of the Akimbo Snakeshot Magnums having it previously a range of 5 meters, but now after patch it's 3.8. But if you end up kidding it out with the long barrel attachments and all the things that players will use in that meta for the akimbo snake shots it builds it out to be previously a range of eight meters which is now tuned down to a 5.5 meter spread now while we're talking about the magnum itself here before we talk about the shift in the meta we ended up also seeing that the base regular variation of the 357 had a fire delay that was essentially removed with the lightweight and match grade trigger attachments bear users will find this pretty helpful if you're like me though you probably won't see much of a difference in the pistol because I use a 50 GS, so it brings it more so in line with that. So the change is thus nominal, but it's a more viable one-shot headshot pistol now at that point in the majority of main modes, though of course not necessarily Warzone. You also won't notice this in Warzone if you end up using it in the Gulag, because the Gulag uses the base 357 with no attachments, so that shot delay will still exist there, just be conscious of that. Now in terms of what this may mean for the meta, I've already seen a huge increase in RPG usage, and I would imagine the Renettis in its akimbo burst fire will be something that climbs that meta as well here within the next couple of days to weeks but one demon down another one seemingly going to take its place so we'll just have to see how everything plays out additionally there was also some changes to the Bruin MK9 where there were some challenge changes it seems like where what was stated that smoke challenges are now more forgiving not necessarily just in say officer challenges but also seemingly with the Bruins unlock challenge where it's a little bit ambiguous but we may have some guidelines from what Joe Seacott mentioned where they were going to look to make it so you could get 
credit for that if you or the enemy were in or near that smoke as opposed to needing both to be right there so that should be something that hopefully allows you to unlock that a little bit easier but also something that i wish they would have been a little bit more clear on that but anyways, that's it for the weapon changes. We saw some technical changes to round out these updates in which that included a height and radius reduction for when the enemies are parachuting in to which that announcer VO will come in saying that an enemy is dropping in near you. That is something that I guess is to limit the immediate spam of players dropping in and immediately dying, but I still don't agree with that mechanic. I don't understand why this was added in with this last update of 1.20. It's not something that I think is a great addition, but alas, it was changed no less. Then we also saw that helicopters are added back into Battle Royale, and seemingly that has patched out the out-of-map exploit, where you could get underneath the map and you could not be shot at by players above. It fixed various exploits for ground war infected, and also fixed a game battles issue where players were unable to join matches. So ultimately, that was the updates and changes made within the last 48 hours that kind of went under the radar, and again, only were mentioned in just passing mention. So some bigger stuff here, I think, in the way of not only the content added in, but also the changes made for the snake shot and also the Bruin and of course some of those technical changes as well but that's kind of where we're at we still have some content to come of course we still have a lot still that has not been made public from the roadmap one interesting thing that again in this sort of time frame of the last 36 to 48 hours is that when hard hat was brought up Joe Seacott mentioned that it would be in the mid-season update and that's something that confuses me a little bit because we're already past the midpoint and of course we had an update that was just before that midpoint which we seemingly thought was the mid-season update but with three weeks rolling around and I'm not really expecting a title update this week with one also going live presumably maybe a week after that with only two weeks left in the season that's not necessarily a mid-season update if you ask me that's more so like a three-quarter season update but anyways hard hat and other content is still on the way but in the time being we've had some adjustments made right here in the game but that's it that's where we're gonna wrap it up so i'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below anything you are really interested in and happy with or maybe displeased with out of these updates anything that you're looking forward to whatever it is let me know down in the comments but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare updates news information tips tricks all that good stuff we got you covered here on the channel so if any of that interests you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected outside of youtube break live on both those if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that like is down there in the description below but i'll send out of the way thank you guys all so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace